Coming up on Haynes Garage, we will diagnose and repair a 2000 Ford F-150 that fails to start. With Haynes Repair Manuals, you can do it. Haynes shows you how. Hello and welcome to Haynes Garage. I'm Steve Ford and today we're talking troubleshooting because we've got a vehicle behind us that's owned by one of our Haynes colleagues who went to start this truck earlier this week in their driveway and it was a crank but no start. So we want to go through the diagnostic procedure that's outlined in our own manuals accessed either online at Haynes.com for instant access with a lifetime membership or the print version which we'll refer to as well. You can have access to the Haynes Manual and follow along, or you can follow along with us just with the steps we'll take, starting with going into the cab right now. Okay, well, we're gonna start with the basics, which is the concern, cause, and correction. The three steps we wanna go through with any diagnostic. Our concern is it cranks but doesn't start, so let's try to recreate what that's like and listen right now. Well, it cranks, but it doesn't fire. So we're assuming we've got gas. Now, even though the gas gauge says you're half full, in this case, if the sensor or the gauge are malfunctioning, we might not have gasoline, even though the gauge is indicating we do. If your gauge is working and it appears you've got gas, the other thing we can do is to turn the ignition on, not crank, and listen, once the chimes go away, as they're going away, we should also be hearing a fuel pump going through its initial spool up to bring pressure. So we're not hearing a sound of an electric fuel pump. Electric fuel pump is located inside the gas tank. It's integral with the fuel sensor for the amount of fuel that's back there. At this point, we've eliminated an empty fuel tank, ideally. We see we've got fuel in the vehicle. This gauge we're gonna trust is accurate for the moment. And we're gonna go under the hood to start our diagnostic checks. Okay, well we've done the basics inside the cab. That's the first step. We want to begin with the simplest things we can do. Sometimes they reveal the problem right away. If the fuel tank is on E, you're going to go in to see if that you have gasoline in the tank. And by the way, an inexpensive tool you might need is a five gallon gas container and hopefully the gas station's not too far to walk. But in this case, we know the owner had filled up the gas tank the day before this failure. So the other question we wanted to ask was, was there any warning before this failure? And the answer was yes. There was a, an intermittent flat spot. The vehicle would bog down and seem to be running out of fuel. And then eventually that thing just wouldn't start that next morning. So there's some buildup to what failed here. We'll have to find out what that is. And we'll go over to the other side here, which is we have the electrical possibility, which covers ignition checks. We're going to go over to the fuel side because at this point, we don't know whether we have fuel pressure or even fuel coming up to the engine. So what we'll use for that is a fuel pressure gauge, which you can buy at an auto parts store for anywhere from $30 to $50 or $70, depending on the model you buy. Uh, some uh, parts stores have loaners, and that's great because then you don't have to make the investment, you just borrow it overnight. Uh, that we're going to use to check the fuel pressure. It's a fuel-injected system. We expect to go to a fuel rail where the fuel comes in under pressure, and we should see a figure that matches our specification in our manual, which is right around 30 pounds per square inch, something in that range. Certainly, if we get zero, we know right away the fuel pressure is not adequate, and we'll chase that and find out that diagnostic as well. In any case, whether it's ignition or fuel at this point, we're gonna follow along with our own manual, the Haynes Manual, where we show you how, because Haynes shows you how. We'll go do that right now, following the diagnostic procedure in our book. Let's go. Okay, it's time to go under the hood, and we're gonna start with a couple of checks that are easy to do and quick to do. In this case, we're gonna check the fuel pump relay, which is in the fuse block, along with other relays that control components. Now, as we flip the cover off the relay housing where the fuses are, you can see there's a cluster of relays of different sizes. Notable in our wiring diagram we studied from the Haynes manual, we can see that we have a fuel pump relay that's required to make the contact before the fuel pump gets electricity. So we have to turn the ignition to the on position. In fact, Hey, Mark, I could use a second set of hands here. Oh, you, know, yeah. you might want to have an assistant or your, your neighbor or something. In this case, a top technician. Mark Henderson is our lead technician at Haynes Manuals. This is going to be under your skill level, but I know you can help me out here. I want to listen. All this right. relay right here is the fuel pump relay. I want to hear if it clicks or if I can feel it click, but I can't do that alone in the cab. So can you jump in, just turn it to the on position, let me know when you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We got it. So that with this, 
we know that we crank the engine, we have, we have a battery that's working, but I need actually to hear whether that relay makes a clicking sound. Okay, so I've got my finger on it, I'm ready to go. Let me know when you turn the key to on. Okay, we are going on now. Okay, now I'm feeling a click and I'm hearing a click, and I'm gonna pull out this relay so you can get a view of what it looks like. The relay has a set of connectors on it that allow it to have actually two circuits that are going on. The first circuit in the relay is from the ignition switch. We get power that comes through to the relay. When the relay receives power, it closes a set of contact points that engage another circuit, which would be the fuel pump circuit. So this is a relay that controls power to the fuel pump. We know it works. If it didn't, one quick tip you might appreciate as a DIYer is if you have another same size relay, like we have in the panel here, a similar size, you can actually test by swapping them out, changing positions. If you don't know for sure the relay's working, that's one tip you can do on this step. Uh, in this case, I felt the click, I heard the click, it's audible, I'm gonna put it back together and move on. We've gotta go now, we know we've got power to the fuel pump, we don't know if the fuel pump is getting power at the back end, we'll have to check that later. For now, it's time to go check the ignition side to see if we have power to the ignition. Mark, you ready? I am. Okay, let's go. Okay, now Mark and I are set up here with a voltmeter on the 20 volt scale to look for a signal at the connector over the coil pack to be sure we have power to the ignition side for spark. We've checked out the fuel pump relay. We know we have electricity going there. Now we want to be sure there's power coming into the ignition side to isolate, is it fuel or ignition? We must have spark. Mark, you good to go? Good to go, yeah. I'll, I'll go crank it on your decision. Excellent. Okay. Crank it. According to the Haynes manual, voltage to the coil packs for a 2000 Ford F-150 should range from five to six volts. So we are looking good. Now on to fuel pressure. Okay, now I've got the fuel pressure tester hooked up to the Schrader valve, which is the valve that's on the fuel rail of the fuel injection system. Normally, we want something like a minimum of 28, 30 pounds, up to like 45 pounds with an operational. And if we get zero, we know there's no pressure in the system whatsoever. So that's our next step now. I have Mark in the cab. Mark, you good to go on turning it to ignition on? Yes, sir. We'll go ahead and crank. Okay, ignition on. Nope, we got nothing. Okay, mm. so we know we have no fuel pressure coming through on the fuel pressure gauge. We're gonna remove the tester from the Schrader valve. Okay, well, now that we've isolated it to fuel, we know as we follow the Haynes manual directions, instructing us step-by-step -step on what to do, because Haynes shows you how, we've got the book to go along with and we'll continue to do so. Let's start right now by looking over some prices for what you might have to spend. Worst case scenario, you need a fuel pump. Now, if you have this replaced professionally, you'll probably pay anywhere from $500 to $800 on labor just to be able to replace the pump. Now, this aftermarket unit was $100 at a local auto parts store. This is a brand new unit. This contains the fuel pump and the sensor. Again, about $100 or maybe three or $400 if it's something on a more exotic or high-end car. Uh, we also have the fuel filter. That's about a $20 part for this F-150 truck. That's about the range for most fuel filters. This is an inline fuel filter. To do that, you need this special tool, fuel disconnect tool. This is not one tool, this is six individual pieces, various sizes for different size fuel lines. That's about $20 at an auto parts store. If you're gonna replace the fuel pump, this is actually submerged in the gas tank with the sensor, as I mentioned. This is a tool that would be used to undo the lock ring if needed. If you do find that you need that, the Haynes manual will indicate what the tool looks like and why you might need it. That's about 50 50 to $150, you can buy these online or at an auto parts store. Lastly, we've got the siphon, which is anywhere from $15 to $20, plus or minus, at a hardware store or an auto parts store. Let's go forward and go deeper, and keep in mind that if you're going to do the tank yourself, that's about, on a five-point scale, that's about a four or five. Danger around fuel, be sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby, that's mandatory. Plus eye protection. You have two eyes, 10 fingers, and they don't grow back. Eye protection under all circumstances, which brings us then to follow our manual going deeper. So Haynes will show you how right now. Okay, now that we have the vehicle up on the lift, we can go underneath to take a look at some of the parts and components we've talked about here, starting with 
the fuel filter that's in line right here. In line, we have from the back to the front, fuel is being pushed through the, the fuel line into the inline fuel filter. Now we have a concern that this filter may be clogged up or loaded with enough debris to resist and restrict fuel flow that would otherwise go straight up to the engine compartment. But first we need to check and confirm power through the wiring to the electric fuel pump and isolate whether the pump is the source of the lack of fuel pressure. With just 11 volts, our vehicle battery has fatigued under the cranking tests and our battery has weakened. Yet even with power and ground, we knew the fuel pump had failed. Now on to tackling the fuel tank. You can see this gas tank is pretty formidable. It's a large, it's about a 24 gallon tank or so. And if you're gonna lower this yourself, as you can see, Mark has been kind enough to bring over our transmission jack, which can handle several hundred pounds. But if you were inclined to wanna to do this yourself in your driveway or your garage, you'd probably be using a floor jack with maybe a large piece of wood to stabilize the tank. To begin, disconnect the battery. Relieve the fuel pressure in the lines by using a fuel pressure gauge or a screwdriver to gently depress the Schrader valve on the fuel rail. Next, replace the fuel filter. Unhook the fuel line latch. Caution for excess fuel in the filter and line. Use a fuel disconnect tool to detach the lines from the filter. Replace with a new filter and reconnect the lines. Now replace the fuel pump. Once the vehicle is lifted, supported and secure, use a floor jack or transmission jack if using a lift under the fuel tank. Loosen the clamps and hoses from the vehicle to the fuel tank. Remove the tank straps with caution and slowly lower the tank enough to reach connectors and siphon fuel location. Then detach hoses from the vehicle. Safely siphon the fuel from the tank. Carefully lower the tank completely. Remove tank from under the vehicle. Inspect the tank for damage. Replace fuel pump. Okay, well when we get to this step, having removed the gas tank and lowered it to work on it and remove the pump, once we've gone through the diagnostic process and isolated that it is the pump, we're at the cover we talked about. Now in this particular instance for the Ford F-150 truck, this has six bolts with eight millimeter heads on them. We're gonna go ahead and take those eight bolts out as a first step in what we're gonna do. So first thing we wanna do is with eye protection on and staying clear of any of this, this dust that'll come off this uh, gas tank, I'm just gonna gently blow some of the air away to get it so that I'm not gonna open up and remove the fuel pump housing while allowing dust and debris to get into the tank. So I'm gonna spray the area to be sure that I've cleaned around these and that way when I pick up and remove this fuel pump assembly, will not be responsible for putting any more dirt in here. Start by removing the six bolts. Note the position of the fuel pump housing. Gently pry the pump loose. And that should allow me to bring the pump up and out. I'm doing it very carefully. Why? Because I'm not worried about damaging this old pump. I'm worried about knocking something off of it that could remain in the tank. So you want to be very careful to remove it completely. And that brings us to the fuel pump assembly. With the connector at the top, we have the wiring coming in to power the fuel pump. The fuel pump is at the base along with this sock or filter that's at the base of the gas tank. Also notable is, of course, this is the sending unit. Fuel pump and fuel tank sending unit. The sensor monitors the fuel level right here and sends that information up, of course, through this wiring that sends it back to the module and operating the engine. Visually inspect the new fuel pump and confirm it's the proper pump. All right, at this point, I wanna be sure all my component pieces are intact and secure. Fuel pump sending unit operational, looks like everything should be good. This is the kind of a series of steps I wanna take because I don't wanna install a fuel pump and find out there's anything I could have overlooked on the pump installation. I wanna be sure everything's done carefully because once we put this fuel tank back up, as you can tell, it's a certain amount of labor just to get to this point. Now let's install the new one. Carefully drop the pump in the tank and install the six bolts. Secure bolts in a star pattern. The torque specs for our Ford F-150 is set to 100 inch-pounds. And with that, we have completed the mission to get this truck ready to be restarted. That's our goal. And uh, we, what we're going to do from here, of course, is 
go ahead and raise that gasoline tank back into position, hook up the straps, the connector, and be on our way, let's hope. We'll continue from there. Reinstall tank, connectors, and hoses to the vehicle. Now you are ready to start the vehicle. Turn the ignition key to the on position and wait a few seconds to allow fuel pressure to build into the lines before starting. Okay, well, that wraps it up with a good ending. We isolated the electric fuel pump by the procedure that you just watched us go through with you. That is, we went into the cab and validated that we had a crank but no start. We had starter, battery, we had electrical power to the relay, we had spark operating to the coil pack, and no fuel pressure when we checked the fuel rail. That led us to the fuel pump in the back. All we wanted to check was we've got a good power and ground. We had both. That isolates the fuel pump as not operating even though it had power and ground. Along the way, we put in a fresh fuel filter to be sure that that vehicle is completely ready to go and maintain for our Haynes colleague. That shows you some of the basics and some of the steps that you can go through based all on what we have in the Haynes manual, either the print version or online at Haynes.com. You can subscribe for a lifetime subscription and have instant access. And with that, we want to thank you for watching and encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we had a conversation with all of you as well. Again, thanks for watching. On behalf of Haynes Garage, I'm Steve Ford.